Turn to me and have mer- turn to me and have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my lowliness and suffering, and take away all my sins, my God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, Keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Grief-stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments, so you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes. Your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the paths of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to hear these insults. On the same day at Ecbatana, in media, it so happened that Raguel's daughter, Sarah, also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands. But the wicked demon, Asmodeus, killed them off before they could have intercourse with her, so it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, you are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into the, uh, the upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered saying to herself, no, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter's daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time, then, she spread out her hands and, facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, 
and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. Sir Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes so that he might again see God's sunlight, and to marry Raguel's daughter Sarah to Tobit's son, Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Asmodeus from her. The word of the Lord. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. All the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? for all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they will neither marry nor are given in marriage. They are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. So in religious congregations, they don't take, they take vows, but they don't see that as a sacrament. So a religious brother or religious sister, a nun or a monk, when they become a religious, they take these vows to live out this life of poverty, chastity, obedience, if they're Benedictines, it's slightly different words, but it's that life lived totally for God, but it's not a sacrament. And it's not a sacrament because sacraments are signs. They are signs that point to a greater reality. We have the Eucharist, and that is a sign that will pass away in the kingdom of heaven because we will not need it under the veil of the bread or the wine, but we will see Jesus as he is and we will receive him as he is. And so too, the priesthood, we stand as signs of Christ's priesthood in the world to administer that, to speak the words of forgiveness, which are Jesus' words, and then to preach forth to be a sign of Christ's presence among us. But in heaven, we'll have Christ himself 
And so we'll still be priests in heaven, but it will look different. And so to marriage is seen as a sacrament because it's a sign of God's marriage to the church. The unity between God and his people is like that between a man and a woman. That is unifying one flesh and it bears fruit. And so we see in our gospel today this point to this truth that which we see lived out among our religious brothers and sisters, all those men and women who have consecrated themselves to God, that they are already living in light of their eternal vocation. They're already living in light of this passage today, where they are neither married nor given in marriage, but they live their lives as that sign of that love for others, that love which is able to be fruitful, that love which is able to give joy to the world, that love which is able through their intercession and their prayers to change the world. And there's this line from this one spiritual writer, like he says, you can look at the face of a contemplative, one who's never stepped foot outside the monastery, and his face or her face is like that of a sailor who has been on the adventure of his life. Because the, the greatest adventure which a human can live is that journey of their soul towards God. That is the true great adventure all of us are called to. And so just as you know, a sailor and explorer can travel the world and go through and do all these things, none of that compares to that true adventure, which is that pilgrimage of the soul towards union with God. And so we're reminded of that today in this gospel. That for us, or for myself, I'm living that celibate vocation, but for most of you who are married, it's reminding yourselves that this is that sign which points to that greater vocation. That even as you seek to live that out faithfully and with fidelity, that even in that life, it's meant to draw you towards that true adventure of your relationship with God, to raise your eyes to that. And we hear this too in our first reading today as we know the difficulties of that. Living out in the world can be a life of great sorrow and pain. And many things don't go the way that they ought to. And they certainly don't go the way that we want them to. But we see for Tobit and we see for Sarah that in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that sorrow, when they're wishing for death, what do they do? They lift their eyes to the Lord. Their prayer is not one of cursing God, but of blessing God. Their prayer is not one of despair, but even a hope. They don't see how God can get them out of the situation, so they ask for, for death, but still they continue to bless God. They hold out something that maybe the Lord can do something. And we see that God does have a plan, that he does plan to send salvation. In his time, and more than they could expect, beyond what they were hoping for, but God does plan and intends that healing for them. And we know that even this stands as a sign of what Christ does by bringing us that salvation, which heals, not just in this isolated case like Raphael of the healing of the blindness and the removing of one demon, but we know that our Lord's salvation is even greater. And so for us, whether we're joyfully on that journey towards the Lord, whether we've hit those pitfalls and struggles and feeling the sorrow similar to Tobit or Sarah, we can continue to join in their prayers of blessing God, trusting in the hope which our Lord lays out for us, and that he does have this plan in mind for us, even better than we could possibly imagine. With hopeful hearts, we offer our prayers to our merciful Lord that the power of the living God may inspire and strengthen all who preach and teach in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who hold public office, that all who hold public office may be guided by the Holy Spirit to use their power and authority to bear the fruits of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord may comfort and console those who grieve the loss of a loved one. We pray to the Lord that the Holy Spirit may open the minds and hearts of this faith community to God's will in our lives. We pray to the Lord, Lord that those who have died may one day join the angels and saints in heaven. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord and for Marjorie Coons and for Susan, Mike, and Gus Turnwald, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, in your mercy, hear the petitions we offer this day. We pray in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Glory in His name, forever. All the Holy Church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this chalice in my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins take this in memory of me Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O 
all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks.